So Noah and his family came out of the ark, and from their three children and their wives comes everyone in the world today. Noah had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and from there, uh, over a period of the next 500 years, children having children, we come to the time of Abraham, which would be approximately 2,000 years before Christ. Abraham, of course, is a key figure in the Bible. From Abraham and his lineage eventually comes Christ. Jesus, uh, God had a purpose in this, to bring Christ eventually upon the earth. His plan is from <clears throat> even before the beginning of time. So Abraham had a son named Isaac, Isaac had a son named Jacob, and you will notice that God changed Jacob's name to the name Israel. Because at that time he wanted to refocus uh, uh, Jacob's uh, purpose in this world. And so from this man Israel then come what we would call the Israelites. That's where the name Israel came from. Anyone today who is descended from Jacob would be an Israelite, or as we more commonly refer to them, the Jewish nation. From Israel then, and when Jacob was alive, there were about 70 people in his household. A famine came in the land, and eventually they had to go down to Egypt in order to get grain. And eventually they were taken into bondage in Egypt and stayed in bondage for 215 years. At the end of that period of time, God raised up Moses in Egypt to deliver the Israelites out of bondage. And so you remember the story, if you ever saw the movie, The Ten Commandments, we think of Moses, we often think more of Charlton Heston. But here's Moses going into Egypt, and he does the ten plagues upon, uh, upon Pharaoh and upon Pharaoh's people, and eventually after the tenth plague, the Israelites are delivered out of bondage. He crosses the Red Sea with the, the, the greatness of the parting of the waters and brings Israel out to Mount Horeb. It is at Mount Horeb now that God gives the first written covenant. And this is where we transition from the book of Genesis into the book of Exodus. And so when God gives this first written covenant, you will notice how he refers to it. And this is where I want to stop and, and we'll notice a scripture. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, and beginning at verse 10, Moses reminds the people of what had happened while they were at Mount Horeb. Listen to the words here that we read in, in Deuteronomy 4 and beginning at verse 10. Moses says, especially concerning the day when you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, and they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven, with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. Now notice carefully verse 13. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. Notice in that verse 13 how Moses said that God commanded you His covenant, which is the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> now that's extremely important because this is the last time in the Bible that God will actually use the phrase Ten Commandments. Amazingly, the phrase Ten Commandments is only used three times in the entire Bible. And what's interesting is, that isn't, of course, the only time that God refers to the Ten Commandments. He just doesn't use it in that phrase. This text gives us the key to that. This is kind of a definition verse. And if we were to miss this verse, we would miss the idea of what the Bible is all about from that point on. In this passage, he says the covenant is the Ten Commandments. What you're going to notice is, is from here on in the Bible, every time God refers to the Ten Commandments, He actually calls it the covenant that I made with Israel when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. And so it's a very important verse. If we were to miss this verse, we would not understand from here on what God was talking about when He referred to His covenant. In fact, notice just in the next chapter of Deuteronomy, in chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, listen to these words. And Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your hearing today, that you may learn them and be careful to observe them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive. Now you notice he says the Lord made a covenant with us in Horeb. 
If we hadn't have read chapter 4 and verse 13, we wouldn't have known what that covenant was. But here he makes it clear. God made a covenant with Israel, and that covenant is encapsulated in the Ten Commandments. 